uh, I want to say that originally I was mistaken because I thought that initially he said that it was the two hardest championships in his career. So I apologize for that, Max and Charlie. I was under the impression he was talking about two of his four championships. Um, I, for some reason, I went deaf. I didn't hear him say the two hardest championships in NBA history. With all due respect to the great LeBron James, I think that's one of the most ignorant statements that have ever come out of his mouth. Uh, let's take into account the San Antonio Spurs in 2014 when they went up against Dallas, when they had to go up against OKC with KD and, and Russell Westbrook, and then they had to go up against Miami uh, for crying out loud. And, and then not only that, they had Dame and those boys in the second round. Let's look at the 2011 Dallas Mavericks that were underdogs in every series. Let's look at the Houston Rockets in 1995 and how they were underdogs, and they were a sixth seed, and they ultimately advanced to the finals and swept. Shaq and Penny and those boys. Let's let's take those things into consideration. But more importantly than anything else, the reason why I use such a strong word like ignorant, um, especially, and I would never, usually never associate such a thing with the brilliance of a LeBron James. Um, sir, what about Bill Russell? You know, one of my boys pointed that out to me yesterday. I didn't see the text until this morning. Uh, but Bill Russell won championships in an era when Medgar Evers and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X were assassinated. Bill Russell was a player coach and won back-to-back -back titles. Bill Russell was a black man playing in Boston and had to endure all the things that he endured in order to win. How can you sit up there and know anything about your history, which I know LeBron knows because he's a savant, and just forget that part? I don't see how you can do that. When you talk about your championships and how difficult now, if you were just talking about on the court, I guess you could say it's debatable, even though I would say I would beg to differ. Uh, but when you talk about just the toughest championships because you want to bring COVID-19 into the equation, Max, or something like that, I, I just don't know how you can ignore uh, the trials and tribulations that a Bill Russell had to endure en route to capturing a championship. That's why he's considered the ultimate champion. It's not just because of the 11 he has. It's because of the duress and the circumstances under which he captured them. And they far exceeded the challenges that LeBron James just went through with COVID-19. Well, I mean, look, LeBron is playing, he's doing, he's changing definitions midstream. Number one, okay. I can understand if he says the championship against the Warriors was the toughest. It's a 73 win team, that's the all time record. They were down 3-1 and obviously they have to play the last game on the road. And it was a tight game, and they held the, the, the Warriors, the greatest half-court offense ever to that point in history, to zero points over the last four minutes and change of that game. Stephen A., you and I saw each other at that finals game. We were there and, saw, and, and witnessed history that night. So I understand him saying that. And I understand him saying that uh, being in the bubble was, he felt, or others, players he may have talked to felt, was the most uh, stressful or something like that. But be, it can't be the hardest in the bubble if you win 3-1, 3-1, or, or, yeah, uh, sorry, 4-1, 4-1, You know, they never got extended seven. They only got extended six against the Heat. And I'm sure it was taxing emotionally. But that goes for every single person in the bubble. And if everyone's taxed the same way, then no one has a disadvantage. In that way, it's not the hardest. It can't be. It may feel really tough. I get that. But he's really talking about two different things. As far as you're talking about Bill Russell's uh, uh, performances as a player coach in, in trying times is concerned. I agree with that. Also, you might point to the Knicks in 1969, 1970, who without Willis Reed, remember he limps onto the court, he hits a jump shot, but Walt Frazier had to go crazy in that series in order for the Knicks to win in seven games against the Wilt Chamberlain, Jerry West, Elgin Baylor team. Right. Like you could point that there, there are series throughout history that compare to how difficult it was for LeBron in Golden State. And while no one had ever played in a bubble before this past season, the Lakers weren't the only team to do it. In fact, every other team in the bubble had to experience that. So so that's my beef with LeBron. He's playing a little fast and loose with definitions um, kind of implicitly.
Yeah. Well, we definitely haven't put our, you know, we're not in his shoes. We don't really know what it's like. A lot of players, though, say being in the bubble relieved a lot of the stresses on their body. They could recover quicker. There was no travel, et cetera. All right, guys, we're going to leave it there because we have another topic to get to. And opinions are really flying all over the place about this one. Should Dak stay in Dallas? Because if he does want out, the question is, where should he go? You do not want to. The 2016 Cavs coming back from 3-1 versus 73-9 and team, being down 3-1 versus one of the best teams that ever been assembled. Two-time MVP. Two-time MVP. Um, and then what we went through in a bubble. And if you were not in a bubble, you don't quite understand it. You would never, <clears throat> ever understand how hard it was to win that championship, to be able to motivate yourself, to be out of – this is literally out of your whole comfort zone. No so, family, no No friend. family. I didn't see my family for eight and a half weeks. And then it was just my wife. Never, I didn't see my kids until I got out of the bubble, um, 96 days. You, everything you're accustomed to, your own bed or, or your chef, you know, your sleeping pattern, you know, you're so accustomed to, you know, for me, I'm a routine guy. And when my routine is like knocked off, I, I, it's like, I don't know, it's hard for me to center myself. So I'm with you. I, like, I'm literally in the bubble at times, like in my room, literally seeing the walls like this like the shining <laughs> just blood just blood. like blood <laughs> coming down my walls i go in the hallway it's like two kids on a tricycle i'm like oh holy <laughs> shit, what is going on i gotta go home I'm you, ready actually, to you, leave. you haven't seen the shining uh we want you to play with us yes for, you gotta for see the shining. it's ever. one of the greatest ever horror i'm a horror movie connoisseur guys i'm sorry for the people that don't watch horror movies but it felt like a horror movie yeah in the bubble and i just believe that i've been a part of two of the hardest championships in league history mm -hmm. and i don't i don't care what anyone says about that you can you can debate who's the greatest of all time individually things of that nature and what they've done but as far as the teams that's one of the two hardest championships in league history i've been a part of that all right so let's talk about them from coming back down three games to one on the 73 and nine warriors in 2016 thinking about all that the Lakers faced in terms of adversity last season. Do you agree those are the two hardest titles won? Uh, absolutely. I, I mean, I dare someone to come up with two other ones. L look, I covered that uh, Golden State Cleveland series for the LA Times. Allie, I, I got tired just kind of going back and forth on the plane for from Oakland to Cleveland for all, all the games in that series. I mean, it was tense. It, it was uh, dramatic. And indeed, they were the first team ever to overturn a 3-1 deficit in the NBA Finals. That's that one. And of course, the uh, NBA season that we just uh, witnessed ending a couple months ago, the longest ever in, in uh, league history, maybe the longest of any season of all time anywhere. So yeah, LeBron is absolutely spot on when he says that. BK, as I pitched that question to Brez, I saw you shake your head yes as well. I, just, I, I don't know. I, look, I'm not a historian. I, I can't go back and, and break down the path for every... Beating the, the, that Warriors team was a remarkable achievement. It's hard to find, particularly given what LeBron had to do on an individual level, the performance that was required to do it. You know, was this title that they just won in 2020, was that harder? Was there path harder? Did they have to play the hardest teams? I don't know, but it was, it was unique relative to everything else that the NBA has ever done. There has never been a situation like that where the mental fatigue that goes into playing in that bubble, as LeBron pointed out, being away from your family for, what do you say, 95, 96 days, whatever that, you know, didn't see his kids. You're, you're out of your routines. Every, the isolation there, from a mental standpoint, it's hard to think of something that was more challenging than that, even if you think the Lakers didn't have the hardest path to get there based on their opponents. So, BK... LeBron compares being in that bubble to that of The Shining. I still haven't seen the movie. Are we surprised? No, no one's surprised. That was two weeks ago, and I still haven't watched it. So will you help me understand what he's talking about? Was the bubble really I that believe, bad? I believe the hotel they were staying at had a problem where every time you got off at the wrong floor, blood would come that's out of the elevator. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's probably what it yeah. was. Red rum. Red rum. <laughs> What's red rum backwards, Allie? Do you know? No. Well, Murder. There you go. Ah! There we go. They I, also did the Morris, like they have those creepy twins in, in, in The Shining. They were, the Morris brothers were there. I don't know. Maybe that's what he's talking about. <laughs> Do you think that the other Lakers felt the way that Braun felt as well? Yeah. That it was like The Shining? Maybe not. Yes. The they walls saw closing in blood. and pools of blood everywhere. And, and, <laughs> and little and, tricycles. <laughs> I mean, Jack Nicholson is one of the biggest Laker fans of all time. So maybe he was trying to get into the bubble a little bit. But yeah, I mean, there's no doubt. You know, when, when you talk to people who, who were in the bubble, whether it's reporters or coaches or players, it was unlike anything they ever experienced. 
And there was no doubt that this season was going to start without a bubble. Now, where are we, you know, eight months from now, seven months from now? Are we in a bubble situation for the, the final four uh, of the NBA or, or maybe the, uh, the playoffs? No one knows. But, uh, yeah, really, LeBron is right when he says we sacrificed a ton to be in Orlando for three full months. Not a lot of family time, not a lot of uh, good friends time, just a lot of team time. And it worked out for them, but I'm sure they do not care to revisit that anytime soon. And again, as he said, it, I won't question him. As he said, it, if you weren't in there.